This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin. I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly sort of true crime videos with a little bit of lifestyle and university sprinkled in where I can. Today I'm finally back with another video. Things have been pretty hectic at uni at the moment as I'm sure a lot of you guys um, will know because I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through the same thing at the moment. But I just thought since it is Halloween today, I couldn't miss out on a spooky upload. So for today's video, I'm going to be discussing the true story behind the film Annabelle. Now, if you watched kind of a few videos Years ago I started my sort of horror series on this channel because as I'm sure a lot of you know I'm obsessed with horror films and so I thought it was only fitting to introduce my loves into um, my channel and I already discussed the true story behind the first Conjuring film so I thought following along the similar franchise I've discussed the true case that inspired Annabelle. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware this particular story comes from the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren who if you didn't already know which I'm sure you do they are very well-known paranormal investigators who also worked on cases that became films like The Conjuring and also Amityville Horror and the story of the film Annabelle was actually inspired by the true experiences of people who owned a possessed Raggedy Ann doll dating back into the 1970s. So if you want to hear about this case then keep on watching and we shall just get stuck. So the story begins in 1970 when a student nurse, her name was Donna, she actually received a Raggedy Ann doll as a birthday present from her mother. Her mother had gotten the doll from just a normal hobbies and crafts store, nothing out of the ordinary, she said she'd always visited that store and it just so happened that upon that trip she discovered the Raggedy Ann doll, thought her daughter would love it and decided to purchase it. And when Donna received the gift, both her and her roommate loved the doll. They had it displayed in their apartment happily, they just wanted it sort of to have its home because they wanted it out on display, like I said, they just loved the doll. However, they weren't aware of the trouble that they would soon face as a result of this doll. The dolls started displaying kind of smaller behaviours that didn't really pique anyone's concern because there was always kind of explanations for it or they, it'd be small things that wouldn't really seem completely strange so just little things like it would move from the chair to the floor and obviously if you saw that you just assume that it had fallen or someone had moved it or knocked it there was kind of no reason for them to be concerned at first but these little movements soon became much bigger and kind of too obvious to ignore one act that was suggested in the actual film itself in which they would leave the doll on uh, donna's bed in her room with the door closed and then when they'd return they'd find the doll sat outside Donna's roommate Angie's room just sat outside the door which is obviously really strange considering they're the only two that live there and this would also happen while they were still in the apartment so they would you know Donna would leave the doll in her room come back and walk past Angie's room and see it just on the floor and they then said things took quite an extreme turn when the doll began levitating and started actually attacking them it was a friend of theirs in particular that the doll seemed to sort of focus its its attacks on. The doll had allegedly attempted to strangle this friend while he was visiting the apartment. And it was one of their friends in particular, his name was Lou, who he started claiming to feel kind of really uneasy around this doll. Whenever he entered the apartment, he said that there was just something really dark around this doll and he just didn't enjoy being in its presence. And if you've ever seen the film, this is obviously linked directly to the start or the opening of the film where the three um, friends obviously asked for help because of the possessed Annabelle doll. They were still skeptical, however, because obviously, like I said, in situations like this, people can often find justifiable reasons for it or they choose to ignore things because it scares them. So they remained adamant that they were going to find like reasonable, normal explanations for all of these occurrences. The strange things didn't end here, however, and things kind of got a lot weirder. The pair would start finding little pieces of parchment paper around the house and there'd be notes written on them kind of folded up. So they'd read things like help us or even help Lou, which is obviously the male friend of theirs who felt particularly uneasy around the doll. No one could provide any answers as to who had written these notes or how they'd been written and also where the paper had come from because there was no parchment paper in the house whatsoever. 
and the turning point came they realized that they needed to seek out some help in relation to this doll when donna returned home from work one day to find the doll with her hands covered in what looked like blood she was sat on donna's bed where she'd left her and there was this like red liquid coming out of her hands and donna said that when she looked at this red liquid it looked as though it was physically seeping out of the doll's skin so their first port of call was to call in kind of a local medium because obviously at the time they didn't really know about like Ed and Lorraine Warren in particular, they didn't know who to call so I think my, my kind of instinct would be the same thing, to call in someone who seemingly had a lot of experience and in this case it was a medium. So the first medium they called for help came into the apartment, kind of heard their story and claimed that there was a seven year old girl who had died in the apartment building they were living in many years before. Uh, she'd been found on the property kind of outside of the building and it was her spirit that was haunting this doll. The medium claimed that this young girl's name was Annabelle Higgins, hence where the name of the doll comes from. And she believed it was likely that when the doll was brought into this apartment building, the young girl attached herself to it. And after hearing this medium's kind of story, what she believed had happened in terms of the spirit in this doll, the girls suddenly had like a change of heart. They felt very like sympathetic towards what they thought was the spirit of Annabelle Higgins. And so they kept the doll, they told it it could stay. And like I said, they pretty much had a complete change of heart because they were they were under the impression that this spirit was that of a deceased seven-year-old girl. Not long after this visit from the medium, when the girls kind of welcomed the doll back into their home, their friend Lou, who like I said, always had such a bad feeling about this doll, began having these really, really bad dreams in which he would be in his bed, frozen, like rigid, not being able to move, and he would see the Annabelle doll slowly crawling up from the foot of his bed like across his body which obviously gives me shivers like thinking about it he said he would wake up in cold sweat so fearful of this doll and that only kind of furthered this negative feeling towards it there was one particular day that lou had gone to visit angie who was alone in their apartment and they suddenly both started hearing a lot of like movement noises inside Donna's room who obviously Donna wasn't there. Lou's first instinct was to kind of slowly creep towards the door assuming that there was like an intruder in the house obviously quite fearful and wanting to make sure that they were they were okay they weren't in any danger. He opened the door to Donna's bedroom really abruptly kind of in hopes of scaring off the intruder but he only saw Annabelle. The doll had moved from its usual spot on Donna's bed and was sat on the floor in the corner of the room. He slowly approached the doll, but as he got closer to it, he started getting this overwhelming, it was almost like a heat feeling as though someone was stood directly behind him. He suddenly like quickly turned around once again, assuming to see like an intruder that had maybe hidden behind the door and he hadn't seen him when he'd first entered the room, but he saw no one. And me sat here filming this, I feel like chills. I feel like, oh. And then suddenly he felt this like excruciating burning feeling on his chest. And when he looked down underneath his shirt, he had these massive claw marks in his skin. When he first looked down at them, the wounds were really deep, almost like gashes. But then they began to heal like a really strange rate. They began healing so quickly that it was almost like by the time that they could do anything about them, they virtually healed completely. And it was from this point on that they knew they were completely out their depth and they needed to contact a professional to deal with whatever was going on in this house. So their next port of call was to contact an Episcopalian priest who in turn hearing of the story then contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren because they saw that they were the most fit to deal with it. Very quickly upon examining the case, the Warrens were able to rule out almost immediately um, the involvement of a ghost as the first medium had suggested. They were able to conclusively tell them that what they were dealing with was a demonic, inhuman spirit that, that, that kind of forced itself on their lives. And then they continued to surprise the girls even further. Obviously at this point they'd assumed it was some sort of like young, poor young girl who died way too soon and she just wanted somewhere to, to stay. So the Warrens not only told them that it wasn't a ghost, it was a demon, but also that demons don't possess objects, they actually attach themselves to people. The Warrens were completely adamant that the demon itself had only attached itself to the doll as a means of getting into the apartment and remaining in the home, but its actual intention was to possess Donna's soul. The Warrens immediately called in a reliable priest, one of their kind of closest priests, to exercise the, the apartment and the doll to kind of get rid of any ties to this demon and then the Warrens themselves took the doll away because 
they knew that this was kind of the most, uh, the strongest link to this demon. But the Warrens knew that the strange occurrences weren't going to end there and they knew that they had a particularly risky journey ahead of them home because of having this doll in their possession. They were aware that this demon would have the ability to damage their car in some way, possibly cause an accident, and so they took kind of special precautions to try and make sure that this didn't happen. They decided to make sure that on their journey home they would only drive through like small country roads and back roads in order to avoid any accidents or fatal collisions or anything if something did happen with their car. And sure enough, as they anticipated, not long into their journey home, strange things began happening with their car. It didn't take long for the engine to completely cut out. The steering wheel kind of kept acting up so it wasn't responding sometimes when they were turning. And even more terrifying is that their brakes were becoming delayed or failing to work. On their travels home, they had placed the doll inside a bag and it was inside the car, but it was inside this bag so they couldn't see it. So when all these troubles began happening, they decided to open up the bag, throw some holy water in, in hopes of kind of stopping the doll doing whatever it was doing. And it did prevent any further car troubles, so they managed to make it home without any other incidents. When they returned home with the doll, its first home was placed on top of Ed's desk watching him work, which is kind of a little bit weird, but I suppose it makes sense if, you know, they want to keep an eye on it. However, they decided that this wasn't a suitable home for it once it began levitating. <laughs> According to the Warrens, it did this on multiple occasions. It would just randomly begin levitating and obviously they'd be quite fearful as to what it was doing. But then one day, apparently, it just stopped and never did it again. So from this point, they thought the doll had gone completely dormant pretty much and that the demon had cut off all ties with this doll however then a few weeks later the doll began disappearing from places they'd left it which is obviously when they began getting concerned again they'd leave the doll in a place and return home and find it in a completely different place so they called in a catholic priest in hopes of him you know exercising the doll again because obviously whatever was attached to this doll needed to once again be exercised However, this Catholic priest was extremely skeptical and he did not believe their claims whatsoever, so he didn't do any of it correctly. All he did kind of was seemingly humour them, he kind of took the mick a bit. He would run round just screaming things like, you're just a doll, you can't hurt anyone, kind of making a bit of a mockery of the Warrens' claims. And so because it wasn't carried out correctly, obviously the job wasn't done. And whatever he'd done at this point obviously had angered this demon attached to this doll. And on his way home he actually faced a very serious accident that left him quite badly injured. Luckily he survived with his life but he had some car troubles that ultimately led to a large collision. After this incident, the Warrens built a special box, like a glass box, I'm sure you've seen the photos of it, for Annabelle to live in their museum in Connecticut, which is obviously inside their home. It's regularly blessed by a priest, I think monthly, just to prevent anything. Obviously, if they can't completely exercise the demon out of the doll, then they kind of want to do anything they can to prevent it doing anything potentially hurtful to anyone. And that's where it lives, in the Warrens' occult museum inside their home in Connecticut. That's everything I have to talk about today. I actually have the chills right now. This creeps me out every time I hear it. Oh. So I hope you found this interesting. Please, 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 in the comments, leave down any of your suggestions down below. If there are other horror films you want me to talk about that have true story behind them, if it's just like a normal missing persons case or a murder, anything really, or even a psychological experiment, as I know you guys love those, please leave them down below. I'm always short on ideas. So if you have anything you want me to discuss, then leave them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you have a lovely Halloween and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Bye.